What's going on guys? National Master James Canty the Third here. Merry Christmas everyone. Hope you're enjoying the holidays. Now today's video we're actually looking at how to face the Nimzo Larson system which is basically B3 move one stuff like that. It's actually very popular. Let's just get right into it guys. It's a very popular opening these days and uh, Nakamura uses it. Strong players use it. So I actually studied some theory on it and um, it worked very well today. So my opponent, international master, uh, very strong. Of course, I think he was like 2480, something like that. But um, yeah, he played it. He played B3 move one. And now a lot of times you can play knight F6, which uh, I played a King's Indian defense, of course. And if you play the KID or any type of Indian systems with knight F6, the problem is when you go bishop B2 and E6 or G6, a lot of times they capture here. And then you have this weird structure where it's almost like a Trumpowski. You know, Trumpowski is kind of weird too. So, you know, E takes F6. I'm not a fan of this. Like, I'm not, I don't get good positions that way. So, actually, the theory is E5. Just center control. Very simple. Bishop B2 and Knight to C6, still in theory. E3 and then D5, right? This is literally all the theory you do. D5, you set up like this. Now, after Bishop B5, which is the standard move, they always do this with the bishops. They put pressure on the center with the pawns. So they're kind of like playing an Indian system, actually, as white, in a way. Because in the Indian systems, hyper-modern systems like Nimzo, King's Indian, stuff like that, they attack the center with pieces and pawns, so sometimes c4. Now, knight f3 and f4 are the main moves. If knight f3, actually, I think you still go up. Oh, it's, it's our move. Bishop d6, sorry. So bishop d6, I was about to say, it felt, it felt like we was down a move or something. That's right. Bishop d6, defending this pawn. Now, if knight f6, we actually go queen to e7. Queen e7 is actually the, the main move here. So I was expecting to see that. But he actually played f4, which is the other one. You only have f4 and knight f3. This one is aggressive. And now, guys, check this move out, okay? After f4, what are you going to do right here? Pause the video. What are you going to do? There's a lot of options, right? If we take this pawn, bishop takes g, uh, g7. And this check looks good, but it's not as good. And, you know, you're just getting in trouble, basically. You're not supposed to take this pawn. And queen e7 runs into trouble. I mean, knight f3. Like, this is a problematic opening. I will tell you that, guys. You just get in trouble all the time in these kind of lines here. Let's actually see why um, queen e7 is bad. I just want to see what happens on queen e7. So they play knight f3. Oh, you still can't take. That's right, because bishop takes. And then uh, f6, castles. Says e takes, takes. Oh, castles, I'm supposed to take here. So I guess you can play e queen e7, which is it is a move that has been played. Um, I'm not a big fan of it because I don't know the line. I got in trouble before. So queen e7 is not the move. Actually, the move here, guys, is f6. Believe it or not, f6 is the move, allowing stuff like queen h5 to happen. If this does happen, you play g6, actually, and then you follow up with knight e7, and you actually go into this. This gets crazy. Rook f8, hitting the queen. I'm into this kind of stuff. I'm into the tactics. Bishop e6. And then I actually play queen d7, castle queen side. So crazy line. Crazy line. But I'm prepared for it because, you know, I'm a tactical player. That's just what tactical players do. You know what I'm saying? That's just what we do, bro. Very simple. So uh, let me actually move this over. Adjust the camera a little bit. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, so uh, after f6 happens, bishop takes c6, which is actually an inaccuracy. The main move, I think, is um, e takes f4. I have to go back to the theory again and again, like today or tomorrow. But bishop takes c6 is inaccurate. So after pawn takes, he takes on e5. We take on e5. Now, again, bishop takes e5. Whoa, he just hits me. He's swinging at me. Swinging. You know what I'm saying? The man's swinging at me, right? So, after bishop e5, well, what, what happens if we capture, right? Queen h5, and we live. Okay, you in trouble. That's a check. I'm taking. GG, basically. So, what do you do? What do you do? Bishop takes e5 is on the board. What do you do? Your move. What you gonna do? Yep, yeah, I'm talking to you. What are you gonna do? Bishop takes e5 is on the board, bro. Here's the move. You ready? Queen h4 check. Flex real hard. Queen h4. Very nice move here. So queen e4 is our is our intention here. Now I'm curious to see. Oh, actually, there's no queen h5 check anymore. I was going to see what happens if he plays one of these moves. 
but I just take the bishop now because I've now eliminated this check. So g3 is the best move. Bam. And after g3, here it is. Queen e4. And he was, this was already over. At this point, I knew he was lost because after queen e4, we are hitting a rook and a bishop at the same time. They're both attacked here. Let me see what else. Queen e4. I know he had this check. He didn't do it, though, because I have g6. Yeah, check runs into g6 immediately, hitting the bishop and the rook steal. And, um, yeah, so he took on g7. He took on g7. So bishop takes g7, hitting my rook. My rook's gone. But, of course, I mean, I'm going to just take his. Takes, takes. And I just looked at this theory. I think I played king d8. I played a friend over the board. Shout out to Lamel Mack. What's up, big fella? He was here in Michigan. And he, we had a similar position like this. And I think I played king d8, something like that. But going back to the theory, it's actually king e7, which is kind of weird. Excuse me. Going back to the engine, too. They said king e7 was correct. So king e7. And um, after king f2, there's a better move than what I played. And I played it afterwards. I played it afterwards, guys. But there's a better move than what I played in the game. See if you can find it. Very tactical game, guys. This is my kind of game, right? See if you can find it. What would you play here in this position? Pause the video if you got to. We're going to be here. What are you going to play now? King f2 is on the board. This looks pretty crazy. My rook's hanging. Do I leave my? Do I bring my queen out? I can't really. I mean, I can develop my bishop. Maybe I can go knight f6, right? Here's the best move. Bishop takes g3 was best. And I actually did this. I remember doing this, but my king was on d8 when I played um my man's Lamel over the board. He had national master too. So we was playing blitz games over the board, and I actually played this move. Bishop takes g3. But my king was on d8. This time, though, because I looked at some new theory, I remembered that the knight on f6 would be good, but I needed my knight to be on c6. There's this, there's a variation that looks exactly like this one, but with a knight on c6. So the difference here is when I play knight f6, I can't play bishop b5, because like what happens, what actually what happens, I played knight f6, right? And queen g5 was what, like one of the moves from the book, or queen h4, and then I could play bishop e5 with my knight defending it already. And then I was going to be hitting this. It's like a wild line. But my bishop, my knight, like, I can't do that anymore. And he, if, if queen g5, though, I was just going to take on h2. But I did have a better move. Bishop takes g3. So he plays queen h4. I mean, this line gets crazy. Like, bishop takes f6, no good. I'm good to go. Right? And then queen g5, um, I wonder, is it just queen takes h2? I think I was going to do that. I think I was planning to do that. Okay, it is that king. Yep, yeah, and then if he plays king anywhere else, I can take this knight with check. King f3 is bishop a6 check. Okay, what if he takes it? Uh, I mean, bishop h h3 check. Yeah, uh, king e2. Okay, I'm always taking this with check. Check. I did see him running away, though. King d3. Queen f1 check. King c3. Rook A to G8. What? That, wow. Can I do this one, though? What if I do Rook H to G8? Am I losing? Can I do this? What's wrong with this move? It seems the same. I guess I just don't want my Rook. It seems a little weird, but Rook A to G8 is the best move. Wow. And this is wild. Like, look at this position, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is, the type, this is the type of stuff you get in the Nimzo Larson, guys. Wow, but after queen takes, queen check, king e7, he went king f2, I went knight f6, he went queen h4, defending h2, and attacking f6, and then, now, I took on g3, bam, hit that man, bishop takes g3, you know what I'm saying, it was very nice, I was very, very happy to make this move now, and I think it's a little bit better now, to be honest, it does force pawn takes, because if queen takes, well, lights out, this is a family channel, don't do that. Don't do that, right? That's over. So, king takes. I'm just taking, coming through the back way. Back door was open, you know. So, h takes g3. And then queen takes h4. g takes h4. And then I hit this man with a combo. Knight e4 check first. After king c1, I play rook g8 immediately. And the reason why I checked him instead of rook g8 is because he can just take this. And that's what he wanted to do. And he still has a little, I guess a little bit. He's still fighting, right? He's still fighting. I have the rooks. I'm winning, but he's still fighting. So I played 94 check. So there's no way he could take anything on his way out. And he went king here because anywhere else runs into rook g8 immediately. And 
let me get this arrow off sorry okay and I'm hitting the knight that's loose so he went king f1 I went rook g8 I knew he was gonna move the bishop I mean why wouldn't you and then check hit that man with a move check if you step off I'm taking so what did he do d3 and then here it is bam check with the other rook and that's make bro hit him right well, actually, it's very close, but here it is. That's me. But beautiful, guys. This is a how to play against the Nimzo Larson 1B3, stuff like that. That stuff's hard, honestly. <laughs> it's getting harder to play against. So the theory is uh, I'm putting this out here for you guys to actually study and for you to know. In certain lines, of course, you can play it in this manner. Watch this video many times to get the concepts down. Again, from the beginning, B3, E5 is the move. And it's very tricky. Knight to c6, d5, bishop d6, we defend the center. f4 is the tricky line, and you actually answer it with f6. Crazy, f6. And if they do play queen h5, again, what do we do? g6, queen h4, because he wants to stop you from moving the knight, but we move it anyway. And if takes, rook to f8. There's a lot more theory in here. I'm probably going to post some more videos for you guys as I get them. As I get the games and go through the theory, I'll post more for you guys. But this was an IM. He went down to the theory that I knew and remembered. And I went through this and I was like, oh, this is easy. You know, this light work. Feeling great, right? And we went on to win this game. Again, bishop d6, f4, f6. Take, 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 take. And he wasn't supposed to take this. It looks like you can, but he's never seen this line. Obviously, as an IM, never seen the line. Check. Queen e4, hit him. You know, knight f3 doesn't work. I just take the bishop. Queen f3 doesn't work. I take the bishop. So he has to do something. Bishop takes g7. I get one, you get one. But he checked me instead. King e7. Looks scary. But also his king looks scary too. And he only has two pieces. Takes three for a successful attack. My students know that, right? So king f2, knight f6. Hit him on g3. That was a star move. Like bishop takes g3 is a star move. You got to remember this, this move here, bro. So... Yeah, so it seems like my son's up now, too. Shout out to my son. Merry Christmas. You know, give him his gifts and stuff. Uh, so Merry Christmas to all you guys. And um, I'll see you on the next video. But check this out, of course. Subscribe, like, all that other good stuff. Share it. Thank you so much for watching the videos, guys. Merry Christmas to you. And I'll see you on the next video.